This is House Planning Help, episode 121. Hi there, I'm Ben Adam-Smith, and this is the podcast for you if you're interested in self-build, because I'm exploring what houses we should be building in the 21st century and trying to break down the major roadblocks that may get in our way. Alongside this, I'm still trying to make my own project happen, and I still want to build an energy-efficient home before I turn 40 this coming August. In this session, my guest is Janet Cottrell from Passive House Homes, and we're investigating the pros and cons of building a passive house with a kit or system. You know I'm trying hard to move this project forwards. I do need land, and that's where I'm at. We've found another plot that we really like. You know there's a buck coming, don't you? <laughs> Let's go through the good stuff, first of all. The price exactly what we would be hoping the right range it's a village location so not in the town that we currently live in that's no issue because it's a lovely village friendly there we've spoken to the neighbors it's a south facing plot a little bit of greenery behind all good all good what is the but then well it has no planning permission Yes, that's not good, is it? It's a Category 3 settlement. And as we understand it here in our area, our district council, that means it's Greenbelt. Although I don't fully understand how you can be on the Greenbelt when you're within a village. We're right opposite the village hall. So it's just an odd thing as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, we're trying to throw everything at it. It's a builder. I don't like it when they do this. I've mentioned it before how really they go and they look at properties and think, well, how can I make as much money from this as possible and just divide it up? Although in many respects, this actually, it does fit quite neatly into two plots. So they've taken the garden off the other property and they both still have a pretty good garden. So I think it does work in this case. I just see it happening more and more. And to make a quick buck, the world goes round like that, doesn't it? So the front gardens as well, people put in the carports because the value of the property will be worth more. And that's really, it's not common sense that drives any of these decisions. It's all about how much money can I make? Anyway, I digress a little bit. So with no planning, where we're at is it's coming up to a stage where it's sealed bids. The builder is just going to sell it one way or the other, whatever they get for this piece of land. And so luckily I'm quite well connected with a few people who can help me in terms of planning. And that's been great. However, I've got to make a decision. What do we do? Do we take out an option on this? Is it worth the fight or am I just going to pour money down the drain? And in some respects, if there's money for an option, then this could be a gamble worth taking. If we get this option, we get the permission to build, then it's entirely worth putting that money on the table. But then you could flip it around and say, well, what if I lose £10,000 in the process? And yeah, so we'll see how we go and I'll update you on that. Let's get to our interview. It's with Janet Cottrell from Passive House Homes. Not only is she an architect, but she's an author of the Passive House Handbook. We've spoken to co-author Adam Dadabai on episode five many moons ago. And together they have been working on a system with the rest of their team called PH15. And I thought this is the perfect opportunity to explore kits and systems. We've never really done that before. And then we're going to zoom in on their particular system and how it works. I started by asking Janet how she became interested in sustainable architecture. Well, I think because at some point I wasn't sure whether I believed in climate change or not and I didn't feel I had sufficient information to make a decision about it and I also was uncomfortable with the way I was practising as an architect and I couldn't really say exactly why or what I should be doing. Or So I, I, I was lucky that I was in a position where I could go and do a master's and take time out of my business which is, I, which is what I did, specifically to work out whether I really believed in climate change. And do you? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes. So, I, yeah. And then to just look at some of the, well, you know, how should I be building, basically, responsibly? And by the end of doing the Masters, yeah, A, I decided I definitely believed in climate change. And B, I was working out, I felt as an architect, what was my responsibility? And I decided my responsibility was to get the fabric of the building correct. And I felt the answer was to be, it was energy efficiency, to make a building as energy efficient as possible. Um, and about that time was when Passive House was just being beginning to be talked about. And I thought, well, this seems to work. So I'm not going to try and reinvent my own solution, which I did feel a lot of people were trying to do all the time. I do think in the UK, we have a tendency to keep trying to do things again and again. So I, I was quite happy to, to just find something that appeared to work and I was very impressed it was been had been developed by a physicist. In terms of today's podcast we're talking about kits and achieving passive house with a kit. 
Before we go there, can we just talk about kits in general? What is a kit when we're building a house and how widely does that stretch? I don't actually think in the UK it's common at all, really. It's clearly more common on on the continent and I think in America and Canada. But then they have much bigger self-build markets. And and I think the, the concept is, as in all modern methods of construction, MMCs, I think they're referred to, is that you, you get the advantage of precision off-site, making in good conditions, and then you get it on-site and it goes up quickly and you save on your overheads. And it should be, well, it's back to not energy efficiency, but efficiency in time and efficiency in quality. Kits are not necessarily turnkey, though, are they? No, I, I, actually, we're not calling ours a kit, actually. We're calling ours as a system. So it's a PH15 system. Uh, because with a kit, you get the idea you're almost getting pre-made whole sections and it's sort of clicking together. And and I think maybe something like the Huff House might be something that would be considered like that, where there's a lot more being done. There are even wiring and putting plugs in and things like and windows are pre-installed. And the other side to that is you've got big elements that are heavy being transported and then put into position and you're, you're um, really doing much less on site. With a kit, will you always need a lot of equipment to put it up or is that also part of this, that we do it all off site and then it's very simple? I've seen a half house going up on a film and they did have specialists because, again, it has to be very accurate and they did have their own bits of tools to enable that and they had their own workforce coming and doing it who knew how it all went together. Whereas our, our idea of the system is to make it simple on site yeah, so that you don't have any specialist equipment on there. So it's, 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 it's using the same range of tools that you would use on a site normally. So you're not taking people outside into some other, other place. They are having to be more precise than on a typical UK build. But that is just the case. If you want to be energy efficient, you're going to have to be a bit more precise. <laughs> There's no way about that. But you can make everything else as easy as possible. And I have to say, I had a bit like I didn't want to think that you were taking away the joy of being on site and working. There's lots of people who want to... We've got a couple of people now who like it and want to have tried it, carpenters, and they enjoy the experience. So there's still enough skill left in it. I suppose I'm saying there's still enough skill left in the process on site. Can we look through a number of different types of kit building? We've sort of done it already, but are there specific kinds and what falls into this kit versus system? Well, it's interesting, what is a kit and what is a system? I'm not absolutely certain. I think I would say a kit was just something that was more complete and much maybe made up in panels and something that might have windows pre-installed and maybe insulation pre-installed and even airtight taped and things in, in, the, in the passive house sector, in the low energy sector. So much more complete uh, components. Whereas the system is just giving you a set of components that you bring together on site. And how far you take that, I suppose, is up to you. In our case, we're sort of a halfway house, is what I would say. We're saying we're pre-cutting the frame, but we're, doing, we're not actually making up panels. We're not pre-installing windows. I don't know if that answers that question. I, I know that somebody was retrofitting a building recently, and they had you know, these huge panels pre-made with gaskets on them. And they were having to be craned into position. You know, they were so massive. And, of course, it does go very quickly, but it's, that is a very different thing than bus having a set of components delivered to you, which you then fix together yourself. So I think I understand more about kits and systems, but what are some of the advantages then if we're trying to achieve Passive House? Well, I think there are very specific reasons if you're doing a, a low energy build why you would be attracted or why a system build could help or a kit would help and i'd say some of those are or, or the two main ones i would say are the fact that you've got unusual details and the more simple that they can be made like the air tightness details between your major components like your wall to floor or your wall to roof or the details around your windows if you can have solved those in a simple way, you really have given a huge advantage to the construction process, both in time and in complexity. And hopefully it will be cheaper as well. And then the other one is just the fact that some of those materials and systems are unfamiliar to the UK. 
So if you're providing a system, you're wrapping those things up, with passive house certainly, you're wrapping those things up so that you're making it easier for someone estimating the price as well. So you're taking away, because I think a lot of tenders get elevated in price because people are unfamiliar with things like the windows and the ventilation system and the tapes and membranes, in particular those elements, I would say. So if you can provide those elements and you can quantify them, because, you know, how does somebody who's never done a loan engine know how much tape, how many, you know, to allow for even? And things like the ventilation system, if you've never done a whole house ventilation system, to go through the process of understanding that, it's unlikely to have the time to do it during an estimate, but we can do it very quickly and then it leaves time with some support on site just to, to help people to put the thing together. It hasn't elevated the price. At what stage will we decide to go down this route then? It sounds from some of the advantages that you've mentioned that actually if you're on a, a tight budget, this could be quite a good solution. Well, I, th- I think it's definitely got cost benefits. So I would see there's a, a market for people who are self-building and they're not self-building the grand design end. I mean, it's useful for anyone, but if you're not doing the grand design... Um, and you really are trying to build your house <laughs> on a budget, it's got to be a good thing, really, to be able to say, I can use this and I, I can get a price for that, you know, those main elements. Basically, the core structure of the house and all the main elements, I can get cost certainty in those elements. And I know that if I put up a simple house and I have a simplified construction system, I've got to be able to be bringing my cost to as low as is feasible. And the same would be for social housing, where, again, you're trying to build maybe three-bedroom houses, typically, three, four-bedroom houses, maybe. And you want something that's going to be as cost-effective as possible. How important is it to keep to a simple form when you're using a kit or a system? Well, it's very easy to keep to a simple form. And we have some standard, you know, three, four-bedroom layouts that people can follow if they they would like to what i found is people always want to have bespoke design sometimes because it's led by the site of course or by the planners but also people tend to want to do quite complicated things and the issue is that will have an implication on cost now the way we've done the system with the stick build one of the reasons we did it was it's very flexible on design so there's probably pretty much nothing you couldn't do but it just means it's going to cost you that much more for the complexity of the design and it'll make the passive house details a little bit more complicated, especially where you have, you know, things like you've been to see the site at Ackerman Road, you've got an overhanging upper floor. It's fine and it's doable, but it's going to make it a little bit more complicated. If you're somebody and you're trying to do a house and you're trying to keep the cost down, you keep it simple. Let's talk through that. As you've mentioned, Ackerman Road, I was there and I saw it. And one of the things that struck me was, in a way, how simple a lot of it was that it, it looked like it was just four by two bits of um, timber and so forth. So what are the elements then of your kit? So it's a, it's a small section eye joist frame. And we use that because it is small section. It's made out of waste timber. And it means a thermal bridge across, you know, you only have this very slim internal web. So in terms of thermal bridging, it's very, very minor. And we use just one standard size, which pretty much fits every, every geographical location in the UK would be covered by that. And we have some flexibility. We use wood fibre boards on the outside, um, which we can alter according to the geographical location, the depth of them. So that, and then we use laminated veneered lumber, LVLs. So we have all, no, we try not to use any steel. So you'll have noticed that that's three, that was three houses you saw, which are ground first and second. They're quite high, but there's no steel in that, except for the porches at the front, which are outside. So in the house, there's no steel in that house. And no steel because you're embracing this simple, trying to keep it. Yes, simple and low embodied even when we're going for energy we are going for low embodied energy as well and also it's just timber is very easy to work with it's attractive to work with so if you can do it all in timber why not do it all in timber and you can do most things in those materials so you've got the beams sometimes we have to use lam- uh, glue lamb beams if it's a really big span and then we ha- we use um, what are called eco joists which do have a metal web they're timber based floor joists but it means that you can feed all your services through, and particularly with your, your ventilation system, you can feed your ventilation system through the floor voids, which makes it easy. 
So, so it's trying to find something that is, that is within the normal skill set. It's not rocket science and it makes doing the things that you need to do easy. And then we have an airtight, a guaranteed airtight board that's in the kit. We have all the tapes and membranes. We include all the triple glazed windows and doors. And because they're very hard to get at a fair price and get a good quality, you know, I think that the UK is very sensitive to price. So we've done a lot of work finding something we think is good, but at a fair price. And then a ventilation system that we also feel, so it includes the whole ventilation system. But it means also that we can build up technical knowledge about those products because windows are a big part of the performance of a, of a low energy building and the ventilation system is, and they both need to be done right. And so it means that we can provide full support to another architect or a builder about those products and provide them with all the information they would need so it's including quite a big set of things, actually, that um, people are getting. I know that I've been asked this when I've done talks before, and I, I never know quite how to <laughs> answer it. If you're building Passive House and you are a self-builder in the truest sense, it's often a misnomer that we're not actually building it ourselves. But for those people that want to build it themselves, is this something that they could do with carpentry skills? Yes, I think it is something they could do. And and. You know, you said, oh, are you going to try and provide builder teams around the place? Well, no, we're not going to do that. Um, but what we've, we're doing instead is providing some training material and some training uh, sessions with people. So for the frame, there's a day training that goes with it. And then we go through every element. That really is quite sufficient um, because you're not trying to train people in how to build a passive house or an energy efficient building in multitudinous different ways. You're just showing them how you build that energy efficiency with this system. So it's, it's, you know, it's much easier to cover in a short space of time and you can answer people's questions direct. And they can always ring up the store at any time and ask a question anyways as well. So they've got technical backup at the end of the line as well. If I'm someone who wants to go down this route, where do I start? Is it with the design and then we turn it into the, the kit frame? Well, we get people sending us planning drawings and saying can you and occasionally you can actually probably most things you could <laughs> but what it will what, what i find myself saying to people is, is it, or you just know and it's no point making the point is that they've made it more expensive so always always the thing is to start off early knowing what you're going to do get a bit of understanding and then and then and then do the planning to the kit that's the ideal and um we can provide you know, basic information about the kit, which tells you this is the size of wall you need to allow, you know, just, just a basic sort of design guide so that when you finish the design, you know that that is actually going to suit the, the kit and it's going to work without any extra problems. Any more advantages you want to mention? The big reason we did it was we just didn't see the point of everyone trying to reinvent the wheel. The first time I did a Passive House project, it took me so much time you know, if everyone is trying to re reinvent the wheel, it's just doesn't, it's just not logical. And also there have been a lot of problems with people getting the airtight, you know, with, with practicalities on site and details not being very easy for people to execute on site and a lot of remedial work, especially on airtightness going on on site. So all of that doesn't really do well for promoting low energy building. So if you can get a system where people have a good experience and they feel supported and things are simplified then I think, um, and also the cost, it's just cost control as well. It's got to be more cost efficient and time because it's more, much more time efficient. How do you cost this system up? If we had the house design, you could pretty much cost it with a bit of a small margin of error on, off a planning set of drawings. But really, you need to have a, a proper set of frame drawings, which you would do in, an, in a non-energy efficient building. If you were doing a timber frame and you were going to get a frame delivered by a timber company, they would produce timber frame drawings and they would price it off that. So we're only doing a similar thing, basically. But it's when you do that, that would normally happen in a normal build. That would happen post-tender. The contractor's estimator would have given an approximate cost, would have estimated the cost, and then they would go to the frame and order it afterwards and then they'd get a price and they'd hopefully have estimated it correctly in our case i think there is some advantage to perhaps having the frame and the kit priced early in the process so you've got some cost certainty on the core elements but that's something it could be pre-tender or it could be post-tender but if you really want an accurate price you've got to do a set of frame drawings um, and a proper mbhr design 
This has all sounded very positive. We have called this episode the pros and cons yeah. <laughs> of, of uh, kit homes for uh, achieving passive house. So <laughs> I don't know you're the best person perhaps to talk about the cons, having your own uh, system, or are you? Can you be very honest here? And uh, what's not so good for passive house? Well, I think for passive house, I can't see any disadvantage. I think for the UK, we love brick. And if you're going to go to timber frame, doing a brick finish aesthetically is obviously going to be a little bit diff more difficult now you can do a brick slip. we've got a project where we're doing a brick slip system and some people don't like that and you can do it we've got a deal where you can do a full brick skin but you're then putting brick is purely as a rain screen and as an aesthetic in order to i suppose culturally respond to what the uk likes my own feeling is you could introduce brick accents very easily to a timber frame system and address it so rather than doing whole brick just introduce brick in other ways or in small sections if that's what you like but definitely I think you know we do love our brick and timber frame does not match perfectly put it that way is there a typical way to clad this then with the timber frame we say there's two uh, solutions that will work very well and easily and are probably similar cost which is a lime render finish which can be to all different scraped, you know, different finishes and colours and things. Or you can put a rain screen on and have whatever timber you like. And there are myriads of ways you can do timber weatherboarding uh, to get different looks. So those are the two. If, in terms of the roof, you end up with uh, a standard roof build-up. So you could do whatever you like. So you could have metal seam, you could have uh, tiles, you could have slate, you could you could have crinkly tin on one of our projects we've got. You really have, you know, the world is your oyster. But on the wall finishes... I mean, you could you could clad it with any sort of weather screening, really. There are other things that you could do. But it's it's the brick thing that I would say is the is is the issue. Are there any other popular kit stroke system choices for achieving passive house? We talked about pH fifteen. Yes, well it's interesting because I was mentioning to you that um one of the other um people who did we did the second retrofit to full passive house in the UK and the people who did the first retrofit to full passive house in the UK, the guy who was involved in that, um, he's also been developing a, a kit of system approach. So we've both gone on similar lines, but my understanding is that there's, is, there's no but actually, I'm sure it's, it's a, you know, it's a, you need, we need to have more of these types of things, I think, on the market. So I think theirs is, um, is of a more of a panel based idea. So, um, that's that's one person and then um there is another oh that i think archetype who've got their 300 house i think project their concept for that was to have some sort of pre-made again more more at the other end than ours is which is bigger bigger panels i think pre-made was the idea and they were going to go for a big they were planning i'm sure are still planning a factory bigger volume straight away than we we would be able to do um, or have taken the choice to try and do so and again, that's interesting because they're prob uh, they were there. Their practice is, I'm sure they've done the most passive houses in the UK of anyone, and they've obviously gone and decided that some sort of system approach would be a very very sensible solution. I guess that's something I haven't asked you the motivation behind going down this route because you you are an architect. So how did it all come about? I remember uh, somebody saying at the um, AECB once a, a throwaway comment. I think it was a Liz Reason said, "Oh, architects are so common, you know. So there's so many of them, you know." And um, I did think, well, there's a lot of point to that one. And actually, sometimes what's missing is the products and the other things that go along along with it. And I actually thought, well, maybe I can contribute more, you know, not in a traditional architectural role. And also, I, I enjoy the whole idea of business and how it works and how you bring these things together and. Uh, you know, can you bring something new to the market like that? It's quite exciting, really. And especially if you're bringing a product that you think has lots of benefits and is very culturally needed, you know, it's appropriate, isn't it? So I think that that interests me greatly. How do you enhance it then over time? Because with any business, we know it's all about improving. Well, I think there's there's just a never ending possibility because you start off with you know, one or two house type plans. And then and, and then there's also lots of different details. So at first we just, we had a pitched roof only solution. We've now got living roof solutions. And I think there could be, I'm very inspired by the Victorians who had their houses and they were almost system 
kit approach really the way they did it and you go down streets there's a sort of uniformity but there's lots of variety and they had these uh, pattern books and inside you could buy all sorts of different uh, you know brick shapes and uh, and porches and and chimney um, details and they and, and they built that up over time and you looked in your pattern book and you could choose all these different things and you could make something quite unique really so i think there's lots of potential for adding you know interesting um, varieties and options <laughs> because you don't want every house you know you do want variety you want people to be able to do uh, be creative we're getting towards the end of this interview now so finally is there anything else that you think we should mention maybe just to say that um i think it's very early days in the uk for such an approach i mean it's early days for for low energy designed buildings and houses but in the context that we've got to build hundreds of thousands of houses. Um, it seems madness, being political about it, that we're not, A, there's no legislation in place to ensure that we build better. And we should be, you know, it's, it's a very important thing that we we, sh- we show and demonstrate. I'm, I'm a strong believer that you, you can make the arguments verbally, but actually it's much better and almost unarguable if you demonstrate what you can do and actually build things, you know, an actual example is far, 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 far better. So my own feeling is, that, you know, there could be, there should be many, many more people self-building. There should be many, many more people custom building. There should be much more land released to people and not the big house builders. <laughs> there should be social housing being built. And all of those should be being built to near or passive house standard. In fact, I don't see why they shouldn't be all be built to passive house standard. And in that context, I think there's a huge place for self-build systems or or just systems building systems for houses and kits and you know there should be options in the marketplace uk suitable options in the marketplace and so i I just it's got to be the potential of the market must be huge but at this point now it's a bit you know it's just early days you know very very early days and the more people who take up the idea and are involved and uh we see more and more examples being built. We've got to, at some point, surely, see the sense and, uh, and be, um, be a bit more forward-thinking in the UK. Well, I wish you well with it. Janet, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Head online to take a look at the show notes for this session. They are at houseplanninghelp.com slash 121. You can review the key points. We've got some photos on there of the kit in use. And if you have a comment or you want to ask a question, you can do that at the bottom of the show notes. Links to Passive House Homes, their website, and also them on Twitter, houseplanninghelp.com slash 121. I'm going to finish up today with an iTunes review. This has a title of great podcast, totally worth the time, even if you're an architect, says Christopher Strange, based in the US. I'm a recent graduate of Thomas O'Leary's Passive House Academy's Passive House Training. While I have no real world experience designing and having a Passive House structure built yet, I am always trying to learn more and came across this great podcast. My day job is an architect and during the work day, I try to listen to a few episodes every day. I'm only on podcast 92 and I'm catching up quickly. Ben's podcast will stimulate anyone who has a passion for the built environment, saving energy and reducing their carbon footprint. The questions and explanations by Ben and his guests are always thoughtful and are in a manner that everyone can understand. I continually learn something from every episode. Keep it up, Ben, and let's spread the word on Passive House and good luck on building your own Passive House home. I also have that dream in the next few years as well. I always think when people are going through these podcast episodes, you know, I've been talking about building this home for a long time. I'm sure they hope that when they come up to date that I actually will have built it. I'm trying. I'm trying. (laughs) It's just not getting there. Anyway, I really appreciate that. That's a lovely review. Thank you, Christopher. And if you're someone who maybe you've been listening for some time, you enjoy the interviews we share, you feel it's helped you in some respect. And as you come to prepare for your own build, wherever you are in the world, then I'd love an iTunes review. It's great because you can help others understand what this podcast is all about. It's sometimes quite difficult for a podcast cover. And I was very against putting a building or a house on there because then you have a particular star. So that's why I've just kept it as the logo. But if you can help others understand how it might benefit fit them then that's absolutely great and hopefully Christopher you'll forgive me that when we do get up to date and if you are still listening to this that we've got a little bit more stuff based entirely on the UK one day I like to zoom out again but that's where our focus has to be for now 
Fabulous. We're all done again. Thanks so much for listening. The House Planning Help podcast is produced by Regen Media. Content that matters.